Meghan Markle and Prince Harry have received a warm welcome as they landed in Suva, Fiji, on the eighth day of their 16-day overseas tour. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex travelled by charter flight to Fiji's capital of Suva. The royal couple were met at Suva's Nazari Airport by Melanie Hopkins, the High Commissioner and Chief of Protocol, Jonathan Itagivata. And the Duke and Duchess were introduced to the Han Frank Bainamra, Fiji's Prime Minister and his wife. Maria, Rotimu Mukapa, leader of the opposition, Alessandro Trapia, the High Commissioner's wife and Rear Admiral William Napoto, commander of the RFMF. Pregnant Meghan looked stunning in a cream dress and hat, while she accessorized with a pair of earrings gifted by the Queen. The Duchess was given a beautiful bouquet of flowers by a young girl. Meghan and Harry observed a royal salute and the Duke inspected the Guard of Honor. Excited well-wishers cheered and waved flags at the royal couple. Harry and Meghan have waved to well-wishers from the balcony of the Grand Pacific Hotel. The move has drawn comparisons to the Queen and Philip, who did the same during their visit to Fiji in 1953. Royal fans have cheered the prince after he delivered a short speech at the welcome ceremony, saying hello in Fijian to the crowd's delight. Harry said, Beulah Venica. The Duchess and I look forward to meeting as many of you as possible during the next two days and celebrating the links and close friendship between Fiji and the United Kingdom. The couple watched a meek, a traditional dance, to close the ceremony. Meghan and Harry have attended an official welcome ceremony. The prince enjoyed a drink of kava, with Meghan looking at her husband adoringly as he tried the local drink which is made from a mashed plant root in the Okona Vekachuriga. The royal couple sat on a raised dios for the traditional ceremony. The Duke and Duchess will attend an official welcome ceremony at Albert Park known as the Vircra Kravi Vakavinyo, echoing an event attended by the Queen and Prince Philip during their Commonwealth tour in 1953. Meghan and Harry will be at the University of South Pacific from 9.45 until 10.45 am tomorrow. It is understood a number of students have been selected for this engagement. From there, the Duke and Duchess will go to their separate respective engagements. Thousands of locals are lining the streets to catch a glimpse of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. The pair will soon head to Albert Park for the traditional welcome ceremony. Meghan donned a 456 pounds dress with long sleeves and a crew neckline by Zimmerman along with a matching hat by Stephen Jones. She also wore the earrings given to her from Her Majesty the Queen and a bracelet from the Prince of Wales. Meghan and Harry have stepped out of their charter plane and are now heading for their first engagement of the day. Meghan is dazzling in a white dress and hat while Prince Harry is wearing grey suit. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have arrived to Fiji. According to reports, the couple, who was dressed in casual clothes for flight, has now changed for a formal arrival and guard of honour at Nazari Airport in Fiji's capital Suva. Meghan and Harry are now flying to Fiji. They waved goodbye to Aussie fans who gathered in Queensland's Hervue Bay to see the royal duo. Meghan and Harry have made no changes to their Fiji schedule despite the presence of Zika virus. Royal correspondent Melissa Davis claimed it doesn't seem as the Duke and the Duchess have altered their Fiji schedule to take into account the risk that Meghan could contract Zika. Ms Davis also added the royal duo planned the Fiji leg of the tour with pregnancy in mind. She told the AM show, I think they were thinking either perhaps she would be pregnant or she would be trying to get pregnant at the time, I think they'd thought about that before they put the schedule in place. Meghan and Harry have been pictured leaving Fraser Island and heading to the airport. They are expected to arrive to Fiji this afternoon. The Duchess is wearing a simple yet chic outfit, a white shirt and a pair of black trousers while the Duke is sporting a blue shirt and a pair of chinos. In 1953 Queen Elizabeth II and the Duke of Edinburgh arrived in Fiji, as part of Her Majesty's first Commonwealth tour as Queen. Sixty-five years later Meghan Markle and Prince Harry will start their royal tour to Fiji and receive the same official welcome ceremony in Albert's Park. The royal couple visited at Cockatoo Island, where they watched the Jaguar Land Rover driving challenge with the Duke even snapping pictures on his phone.
the official opening for the Games has been delayed by a huge tropical storm. Organizers took to Twitter to confirm that the tropical weather event arriving in Cindy would delay the opening of the Games, where Harry is due to make a speech. Both opted for a black shirt with the emblem of the Games, which is the event where the pair went public with their relationship last year. Pregnant Meghan threw on a chic white blazer and teamed it with black skinny jeans and tortoise shell sunglasses, while Harry wore grey trousers and brown boots. The event is an international Paralympic-style sporting event for wounded, sick or injured members of the armed forces, as well as veterans. Prince Harry created the Games after being inspired by the U.S. Warrior Games, a similar sporting event for injured service personnel. When they arrived, Harry put an affectionate hand on his wife's lower back as they walked along the jetty to meet with the competitors and their support staff. They then watched the races get underway before awarding the drivers with their well-deserved medals. The royal couple also spent some time playing with remote control cars with children who had traveled to the event from around the world with the athletes. Harry appeared to enjoy the toys as much as the kids as he was pictured laughing and even feigning annoyance as he gestured his arms in frustration. Earlier in the day, Harry and Meghan unveiled a Sydney War Memorial 84 years in the making at the Anzac Memorial. It commemorates the sacrifices of First World War soldiers from Australia and New Zealand was initially designed in the 1930s. But the Great Depression meant the vision of artist Bruce Dellett was shelved. It features a four-tier cascading waterfall on the Liverpool Street side of the monument. Harry wore the white tropical dress of his regiment the Blues and Royals, complete with medals and sword. Meghan was wearing a stunning black dress by New Zealand designer Emilia Wickstead and matching hat designed by Philip Tracy. They were met by Prime Minister Scott Morrison alongside Premier of New South Wales Gladys Berejiklian and David Elliott, the Minister for Veterans Affairs, on an overcast Sydney morning. There were also crowds along Liverpool Street, while other people, and a cardboard cutout of Harry and Meghan, watched on from balconies as the royals arrived. Twins Crystal and Sienna Dawson presented the royal couple with a medallion and a painting during their visit to the Anzac Memorial. The girls, aged nine, are from the Kumari Aboriginal dance troupe and both said they were nervous about meeting and performing for Harry and Meghan. Crystal, who did an Aboriginal art floral painting said, they said hi and nice to meet you. The medallion, presented by Sienna, said play the game the model of the Beverly Hills Public School which they attend. She said, I didn't want to dance at first, but then it was fun. Their mother, Connie, said, I think it was very overwhelming for them, as a parent. It was a very important ceremony and it's important that the next generation coming through should be part of it. The memorial was first opened in 1934 by Harry's great, great uncle and namesake, Prince Henry, Duke of Gloucester. The plaque unveiled by the Duke said, Opened by the grandson of the Queen, the wording echoes the original which said opened by the son of the King and was designed to focus on the people lost, not the person who opened it. Retired General David Hurley, Governor of New South Wales told the 100,000-strong crowd, Let silent contemplation be your offering. These words found at the entrance to the Hall of Silence evoke the sense of loss and grief that this memorial represents to the people of NSW. A choir sung I vow to thee my country Princess Diana's favorite hymn from her school days, which was sung both at her wedding in 1981 and her funeral in 1997. The Sussexes laid a wreath with a handwritten note which read, in grateful memory of those who paid the ultimate sacrifice and in recognition of the men and women for whom the scars of war endure. They then toured the hall of service containing 1,700 soil samples from each town, suburb and district in New South Wales listed as an address for First World War enlistees. The completion of the extension, which cost £22 million coincides with the 100th anniversary of the cessation of hostilities in the war. The couple had avoided any PDAs earlier this morning at the ceremony and were seemingly making up for it as they walked hand in hand around the event. Saturday marks the couple's fifth day of the royal tour and yesterday things reached new heights for Harry as he and three Invictus Games competitors climbed Sydney Harbour Bridge. 
the Duke swapped the New South Wales standard for the Invictus flag at the top of the landmark, which towers 440 feet, 134 meters, above the water. It took him 13 minutes to ascend the 464 steps to the top of the bridge along the east side, before crossing the central walkway to raise the flag which flapped in the breeze. Earlier on Friday, Harry and Meghan visited another Sydney landmark, Bondi Beach. There, the couple met representatives from OneWave to talk about their work on mental health and then visited MacArthur Girls High School to discuss social justice and youth empowerment. Wow. 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 Wow.